Welcome to Big Bites with Caroline Collins. I'm serving up deep conversations with influential people. My hope is to leave you feeling inspired and motivated. Now let's dig in. Hi friends, welcome to Big Bites with Caroline Collins. I am so thankful and so happy to have you here. We have a great episode this week. So I've told you guys how I've been a little stressed and a little overwhelmed, but leave it to me to be like, I need to go on a 21 day reset. Mm Mm-hmm, yeah. I was just not feeling my best. I felt like I was overeating and that my portions were out of control and that I was just reaching for too much sugar and this and that. So last year I did two challenges with a place here in Houston called My Fit Foods. And I found them when I moved here and they're a meal prep place. And I worked with their registered dietitian to basically change all of my habits that were unhealthy. And I was like, man, this would be such a great episode to share with my audience here on the Big Bites podcast, because after all, you guys all know that I love food. I love eating food. I love covering stories that involve eating food. And I take really big bites. And my parents make fun of me for that. So while I love to eat, I also love to eat healthy food. I love to feel good in my body. And I love to feel like I'm filling my body with food that is good for me. And I was completely lost a year ago. So I asked Dietitian Cat to come on Big Bites to kind of explain what MyFitFoods is and what the 21 day challenge is that I am currently on right now. So I kind of want to show you guys visuals before we get into the episode. So on the 21 day challenge, MyFitFoods designs you a meal plan of the appropriate macros and everything that you need for the week. And you literally only eat MyFitFoods for 21 days, no alcohol. So that sounds a bit crazy, but they're a meal prep place. So they have all different kinds of food. And honestly, it's packed with protein and I'm never hungry on this challenge. And it is amazing. And Once we get into the episode, you'll hear how I thought Kat was absolutely crazy when she was like, high protein, no alcohol, and limit coffee. I'm like, what? No, that's not going to work for me. But it did. I lost so much body fat. I dropped pounds on the scale, which isn't even the point of this challenge. It's like to rewire my habits. But it was so good for me, and I was feeling so good. Last summer, I really felt like I was feeling strong and gaining muscle and losing body fat. So. Um, in this episode, we talk about the protein, um, they have protein powder there. I always eat the collagen protein. I blend it up in my blender with ice. It looks like this and it is so good and so filling. The difference in this protein from other protein that I've had is this one is 110 calories per one scoop. So I do two scoops and the protein count is 21 grams per one scoop. So for two scoops, double that, that's over 40 grams of protein in one protein shake. So we love that. Also, they have like little snacks like chicken wraps. This one's so good. It's like a healthy chicken salad and a wrap. And then their meals come literally vacuum sealed. So all you have to do is pop it into the microwave like this. You don't even take the seal off. And um, this one is one of my favorite breakfasts. It's a morning scramble. It has meat, cheese, eggs in it. I talked about this one in the episode. And then tonight for dinner, I am having the low carb Mongolian beef. And so it's just vacuum sealed. I just pop it in the microwave, heat it up and good to go. Also in my plan, I can have some fruit and some other things and I'm dedicated to that for 21 days. So maybe I should do a what I eat in a day on my challenge. I feel like people really like that on YouTube and on my social media. So it'd probably be a hit on this uh, podcast, at least on the YouTube one. But anyway, I hope you enjoy my conversation with Kat. I wanted it to be a mix of telling you guys about MyFitFoods, giving you guys some healthy tips on how to get in your protein, stay full. There's one part in this episode where I kind of ask some questions that I feel like a lot of us women ask, like about the greens and, you know, what what should we eat if we're traveling and don't have access to this kind of food. So there's a lot of healthy tips and a lot of... um, things that I think will help you shift into a mindset of healthier habits. And I am totally all about that because again, big bites, like your girl loves to eat, Um, but we can all eat healthy and fuel our body with good stuff. So I really hope you enjoy this conversation. Kat is amazing. She helps me so much. It's literally like a therapy session every time that I talk to her and kind of went through a little bit of that therapy session during this episode. I hope you enjoy. Catherine Reed, welcome to Big Bites with Caroline Collins. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm so happy to have you here. Uh, for those of you who might not know what My Fit Foods is or who Catherine Reed is, we call her Cat every time I walk into the store. She is the director of nutrition at a place called My Fit Foods. It's basically a meal prep place here in Houston and other locations throughout the country, but it's so much more than that, honestly. It's it's like such a fun time in there and there's food and people that know what they're doing. And Catherine's a registered dietitian. And so she works with people like me who Ooh. go into My Fit Foods completely lost, disheveled, really down on myself, just like not even knowing where to turn. And I kind of found Catherine. So I'm so excited to have you here to talk about not only my fit foods, but just nutrition in general and how doable it is for so many people. Oh, yeah. I'm excited, Caroline. I mean, truly you are a beautiful human and you make my life easier because you come mm -hmm. in, you are just like, Hey, I want some changes. I'm ready to commit and I need your help, right? And like, as a coach, yeah. that's exactly what I love to hear. It's like, all yeah. right, let's dig in. Well, you know what? I love that you said that as a coach because being a former college athlete and being a former dancer, coaching is my jam. And that's kind of something like I had to come to realize like, okay, I was struggling with the whole health and fitness thing. And so, oh my gosh, now this coach. But the way I found you though, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So I worked with, a news anchor who was constantly so dedicated to his diet and he was always eating my fit foods. And I was like, what is that meal prep? He's like, Oh, it's, you know, it's right down the street. It's, um, this place called my fit foods. You should go check it out. So I went and everybody was so nice. And then I was at the chiropractor kind of still struggling. I like pulled my neck. I'm like, great. I'm trying to get back on my health game. And I pulled my neck and I met Mario, who is the founder of MyFitFoods. And he's like, you need to meet with Kat and you need to come in and for a tour of MyFitFoods. I'm like, okay. He's like, you should do a 21 day challenge. And in my head, I'm like, what the heck is this 21 day challenge? Like, that sounds really hard. I don't know what that's all about. Anyway, went in and it was like, boom, the light bulbs went off. And I found myself in your office signing up for this 21 day challenge, which I was like, is she crazy? She wants me to stop drinking coffee without like sugar or sweetener <laughs> and milk in it. And I'm not going to drink alcohol. Like, are you kidding me? I'm like the life of the party. Like what, what, this is nuts. So I, I sat mm -hmm. in Kat's office and she's like, okay, if you really want to get back on track, this is what you need to do. Kat, you take it from there. I absolutely love it. And I just remember that first talk because you're like, yeah, for breakfast, you know, I have a lot of acai bowls. I do a salad with some protein for lunch and dinner is typically small, right? And I loved it. I'm like, yeah, let's, let's get a reset going. Right. And yep. I kind of dug in and I noticed, you know, party girl, life at the party. <laughs> and as, as a dietitian, as a coach, I kind of feel out where we have some strong beliefs, right? Because I want to make sure that I really understand where, like what we value, right? And I want to make sure that when building this out, it's something that number one, you can do. It's always doable. I want to make this completely doable for you. So I'm going to give you options, but I'm also going to help you see like, hey, this is where we're going to get the best results. We can always work it in long term, right? I didn't say... Caroline, we can never drink alcohol again, but <laughs> you, you really did. You took it in, you listened, and you're like, I'm going to try this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to, yep. I'm going to try this. And I remember in your first check-in, you were like, wow, I actually had the best time. I didn't mm -hmm. have to drink any alcohol and it felt really good the next day. And that's the contrast of a 21 day. Yeah, it was shocking to me that I gave up alcohol and then I was still all it kind of shows you who your real friends are, right? Because I told my <laughs> my group of friends that I was like going to go out with, yeah, I'm not drinking and I'm committed to 21 days on this challenge of high protein and good carbs and the right amount of calories and all the things. And they were like, "Go, girl, we'll support you, but still come out and drink some water or have a tea or something, you know, an unsweetened like plain tea or whatever." <laughs> um and I was like, Okay. And it was fine. It was fine. Like yeah. if you're, if you have good friends, they're not going to try to derail you. I think that's sort of a red flag. If, if they would have been like, Oh, how stupid is that? Like one drink's not going to hurt. You know what I mean? 
and it's real. Like peer yeah. pressure is so real. And I will say from, from that, like your circle group, right? Like mm -hmm. if you've made memories drinking alcohol and that's all you have with them, yeah. like it's fun. Don't get me wrong. But like, if that's all the memories that y'all have, then it's going to be super hard to hang out with them and not want to. Right. Yeah. It's, it sounds like this group in particular, you've made other memories with them, you know, yeah. and you're like, yeah, I can have fun with you and drink water or soda water or whatever. Yeah. Whatever it may be. LaCroix, that was, that came in handy. Yeah. So anyway, I met with you and like, I told you all the things like you'd mentioned, like I am always like, I am a Leo. Like I am always like the leader of the charge and where are we going and how are we getting in? And oh my gosh, I got us in here and da, 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 we're going to go eat there. And I want everybody to have a great time. And like, I, that, that's just my personality. Therefore, um, I mean, I've always like loved food and loved eating, but I think that that's why this reset really did in a way change my life because I was eating a lot and I was really full eating the foods that we ate. And there were some days because Kat designed a whole eating plan for me that I followed for three weeks. There were some days, and this isn't good because you, you want people to get all your protein, right? Mm -hmm. um, that I was like, I'm so full. I don't, I don't even think I could eat this protein shake or this meal that you, that you had in my plan which was still in a small deficit, but packed with protein. And when I say small deficit, I mean like you get the info and you just kind of drop me a little bit from, you know, my yeah. metabolic rate. Like it, it was crazy. So anyway, talk about like the plan that you kind of put me on and mm -hmm. that eating schedule that I, I was on then for that 21 days after yeah. coming off of like eating, drinking, and just like not really focusing on my diet. Yeah. So protein, as you mentioned, you were like, ah, I'm so full. I don't even think I can do this. The difference between, I'm going to just say like real food versus fake food. So processed food is the nutrients, right? And so protein, it's very nutrient dense. You actually don't need as much nutrient dense foods as you would need processed foods. You can eat three donuts at a time, but sit down and eat three apples. Like you're just, you're just not. Right. And so that's really the difference of eating real food versus those processed foods. Right. We can actually give our body more of what it needs in a in a calorie deficit and still give it exactly what it needs. Right. So in the plan, we really focus on real foods. That is it. Right. We really want to make sure that we are cutting out all those processed sugars. Um, I like to say getting back to the basics to help your palate actually do like a detox, you know, I like to think of it like our taste buds are so spoiled. <laughs> yeah. We spoil them with all the, the sodas or diet sodas, all the sweet things, the, the beautiful ice cream. I'm a dietitian. I love ice cream, right? But if I'm eating a lot of ice cream, I'm going to crave more sweets. And that's just what it is, you know? And so really we just do a, a 180 of saying like, hey, we're going to feed you just real food. It's going to be high protein balanced with good fats, good carbs. And so we're giving your body the energy it needs to not only feel great, but actually start building muscle and, and or maintaining your muscle, right? So that's the key to what we do. We really focus on recomp. So what that means is recomposition. We want to make sure that as you are in a calorie deficit, we're either building muscle or maintaining muscle through having your protein and through getting, you know, your movement, your resistance training. And so we really pair nutrition with healthy habits. That's all it is. There's no magic pill. There's no anything. But at the end of this, you feel empowered because it was you. You did it mm -hmm. in a real way. It wasn't just a magic pill or it wasn't like this crazy fast of some nature that you just would never be able to maintain for the rest of your life. It was just, hey, I woke up. I ate my breakfast. After that, I had my protein shake. After that, I had my lunch. After that, I had my protein shake. And then I had dinner all within at least a 12 hour time frame. And I finished before two to three hours before bed. You know, it's, it's, it was crazy because <laughs> I, for the first time in my life, I was on a diet without, um, severely starving myself because thinking that a thousand or 1200 calories a day on top of workouts like is sustainable it it's not mm -hmm. so i would diet and i would like get what i thought was thin and then you know just go back up and then do the same thing again and be miserable while i was doing it so for the first time like i was full i was energized and i started to see 
the bloating and inflammation come down, which was actually for me, like that was more maybe of something that I saw as like my problem. I was so bloated and puffy. And then I saw that change right away. And I just felt like so good about myself. And I was like, wow, I can eat like this chicken and rice. Like, you know me, I love like the jalapeno chicken rice and the taco bowl. And then again, these are like all the real meals with real ingredient, like real chicken and everything. They taste so good. It's like almost tastes like going to Chipotle or something, you know, but it's all healthy and it's like all the healthiest spices and ingredients. And so for the first time I was like, oh my gosh, I'm eating real food. I'm not starving. I feel great. And oh my gosh, I gained muscle and I'm like losing pounds, which was like, I was shocked. Like who would think, you know, you were full, you were full and you're losing weight. Yeah. That's insane. And you had energy. You actually wanted to push in the gym versus like, oh God, I got to go to the gym. Totally. A thousand percent. Um, Also, whenever I came to Cat for the first time, I was actually addicted to fruit. I think that in my mind, like I love sweets. So I was like maybe trying to like not eat sweets. So I was just like addicted to fruit. I was like, wait, what do you mean? I can't just eat like as much fruit as I want. It's fruit. Like how bad is it? Well, that all adds up and there's no protein in it is what I learned. Exactly. So, you know, again, fruit is amazing. It has Mm -hmm. the antioxidants that we need to, to really help those free radicals. So those crazy little things going inside that create damage in our cells. Right. And so we need some, but I'd also say vegetables have just as much, much antioxidants for half the cost. Right. Mm -hmm. And the fiber. Right. Um, and so all that being said is like, I love fruit, but it's, if the goal is to lose weight, Mm -hmm. to lose extra, I like to say some extra love, right? It's really about understanding how much sugar is in this thing, right? And if we are going to have it, let's do it intelligently. Let's have it with protein. So it buffers out our blood sugar, because if we just had, let's say a cup of grapes on their own, your blood sugar is going to go. And I like to say, whatever goes up must have an equal down. And so that's where that hangriness that's where that little like oh my god what's in my purse i'm in traffic right now i'm i'm like 20 minutes away from home i'm freaking out and that's that's this come down right and so having fruit with protein so like i said like have your piece of fruit after your your lunch or with your breakfast right have it with it if you're gonna have it but let's not have it at every meal and let's not actually have it as our snacks all the time yeah, I love that. I, I, that really was like a huge shift for me. But now after doing it, I understand why, because I was full for so much longer eating something with protein in it and vegetables. Cause a lot of like the meals at my fit foods have vegetables in it. Um, I was so much fuller. Yeah. So now I've actually done this challenge twice and I today I'm going to start on my second challenge or on my third challenge really with you which is so exciting so i was so glad you kind of heard from the grapevine that i wanted to do a challenge and then you texted me i was like oh yes like she's (laughs) down okay good so um i was like come on the podcast and let's talk about it like why am i doing it what's gonna happen and kind of go through what cat would go through with anybody else that walked in that's needing help and i think one of the things now that i've learned after two times doing this is um, from the first time I walked into my fit foods to now I have made progress, but I still want to do more work to, you know, make sure I'm working towards goals and maintaining what I want to maintain. And like the first time I went in, I was like, oh my gosh, they want me to step on this, like this scale and this person who works here is like going to go over my data with me. I was like, oh my gosh, that's humiliating. I was like so scared, but honestly, like they do this all day and it's not scary at all. And it was so helpful to step on the total body scanner and then go through results with one of the many amazing people that work there or cat and then say, okay, like if you're looking to lose weight and gain muscle, you need to make sure you're hitting this much protein and eating at this many like macros or calories, however you guys do it. Right. Yeah. So we use the M body machine. And it's a really good good tool to measure, you know, baseline of where you're at with your overall weight. It breaks it down. So unlike a home scale, most of those will just give you that one number. This breaks it down into your muscle and your body fat. So we're actually seeing, okay, how much muscle do we have and how much body fat do we have? 
and it gives us a picture of where your basal metabolic rate is. So I like to say like, this is how many calories your body would burn if you just laid in bed and blinked your eyes all day, like nothing, yeah. did nothing, right? And you know, there's obviously, would I say this is the gold standard? No, but it's always, it gives us a good baseline of where you're at. So the in-body can vary anywhere from um, 25% you know, in that, in that frame, if you're looking for like a true, true, like what is my body fat percentage? You could go get a DEXA scan. Right. Mm. But this is at least giving us that, that thing, that tool to see like, okay, are we making progress? Right. And it's a good, it's a great tool. You know, I just say, I want to make sure that I, I clarify, like if you want a true number, go get a DEXA scan, but we yeah. can also set you up with, Hey, we at least have a good picture. That's going to be within that, that frame. Right. And so, with that, we like to just look at, okay, so we want to make sure we're fueling your muscles, right? So we, one thing that I love on the in-body gives us our lean body mass, right? And what this means, it's, it's, it's all your skeletal muscle mass and all of your organs. So your liver, your heart, all the things that are a living tissue, your brain and your body, right? And we really base our protein goals off of that because every Day, every cell, everything in your body is constantly dying and rebuilding. Protein is the basis of that. It is the building blocks to help make sure that we rebuild those things along with the muscles that when you go to the gym, you start working out again, we need more protein because we're making little tears in our muscles. So we really focus on giving you at least 0.8 to 1.2 grams of protein per pound of lean body mass, right? So that's really where we start with is like, let's make sure that we're at least fueling those pieces and we can always go up. We might be able to go down a little bit just depending on the person, but that's really our baseline of like, I know for sure I'm feeding your body what it needs so that you feel full, but mm -hmm. also that we're taking care of all the internal things, the reactions that need the protein and everything else, you know? Yeah. I didn't really understand how much I was lacking protein until we went over the amount of protein that I should be eating and how much protein is in this versus that. Like, I just was so blown away. I'm like, everybody needs to know this information because it truly just helps you feel full and satisfied. And then like, I wasn't craving um, fruit and mm -hmm. all like chocolate and all this kind of crazy stuff. Extra like my, caffeine. Yeah. I just like felt so much better and for the first time, I just like understood why you would, because I thought cat was absolutely crazy. I was like, how am I going to eat that much protein? That's disgusting. And this, this is not making sense to me, but I'm going to try it anyway, because like I am in desperate need for help. And then I was like, whoa, this is so wild. <laughs> yeah. Within like two to three days, right? You started yes. to notice a yes. difference in your energy, your mental thinking, right? Yeah. Like it's. Yep. I like and to I knew, say, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and I knew what I was going to eat because we had the plan all laid out. So that yeah. was just, it was so easy. I was tracking your macros for you, you know? Yeah, it was insane. But yeah, yeah my brain wasn't going towards like the caffeine and the um, junk food. It was like, no, I'm good. Exactly. And this is what I love about it. You, you saw the difference in your face. You felt it in your body. Yeah. You felt it in your mind. And that's the power of real food, you know? Like, yeah. I'm all about when we're, when it's intentional to have a treat meal and treat foods, but mm -hmm. our baseline has to come from just real foods. And we have to understand that every cell in our body is, you know, it needs to be rebuilt. And the, the, the building blocks to that is protein. And that's exactly, I mean, I'm just oh, yeah. why we build it around protein. And we really want to make sure that we set our customers up and clients up for best results, right? So really, as a dietitian, I like to say, like, my biggest pain point before working here was building meal plans. That, actually, that wasn't the pain point. It was having my clients go make all the food. Oh. So go, you know, give them the recipes, go to the grocery store. Now, cook it all and, you know, make sure you got all the, all the ingredients because, heaven forbid, you forgot that one thing and you have to go back. Yep. <laughs> and then cooking it. And then this was the part actually portioning it out, you know, oh, that's my downfall. <laughs> yes. And that, but that's, that's human. That's real. Like even as a dietitian, yeah. when I got to get my scale out, I'm like, Oh my God, like, it's just, it's tedious, yeah. you know? Well, and, and that like for somebody like me who does live alone and, um, 
I'm only feeding myself. Um, the fact that basically like before I did the challenge, I was, I would go to Chipotle a lot thinking I'm being healthy because I would make like my healthy bowl, but the bowl is like, it's huge. I mean, it's like bigger than my head. And so there's yeah. gotta be tons of calories in there, even though like I thought, you know, oh, but I'm putting, I'm not putting any sour cream on it or guac. Mm -hmm. So like, it's fine. Or getting those big salads with God knows how much dressing on it. Like that's what I was doing. So my portions prior to coming to my fit foods, like were totally out of whack and actually they still can be i have been eating out a lot more which is why i'm getting ready for my <laughs> third challenge starting tomorrow um that my portions and i mean i'm a tall athletic built girl like i can house food i really can like yeah. there's some people who are like oh i hate feeling full that i'm like mm, give me the cake give me like the big port <laughs> okay. so with eating my fit foods it's portion and like that's your portion it's the proper portion it's the proper amount of um protein and then i'm i'm full whenever somebody comes into your office now they're like okay i want to do this challenge i heard caroline talking about it or other yeah. people um kind of what is the process that you go through with them? Yeah, so Caroline, why why do you wanna do this challenge? So I wanna do this challenge for me, for me, 100%, first of all, it's for me, it's for no one else, because I feel like in the last several weeks, I have um, sort of just put my nutrition and meal planning on the back burner. I've been eating out a lot more. I've been having a lot of fun. I've noticed that my, um, you know, when I came off the last two challenges, I really wouldn't have that many drinks in the months following. I've realized now that drink count has gone up. Um, it's just, you know, I don't want to wake up feeling hungover. I don't want to be bloated from the alcohol. I want to get my portions back right. And I just feel like now, like this is right after Easter, we're heading into spring and summer. This is mm -hmm. just for me, the perfect time to reset. And I'm not mad at myself for kind of falling back into some bad patterns. But I think this, because I feel like I have, this would be like the perfect time to reset. I love that. You've also just started this beautiful podcast, right? Big yes. Podcast. Yeah. And, you know, again, I like to think of when we do new things, we have to watch what habits we pair with it. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, what habits are we bringing in? Yeah. And where do we need that reset? So totally. what I'm what I'm hearing is you put your you're ready to put your nutrition and fitness as a priority again. You're ready yeah. to start putting those boundaries around drinking so you can feel amazing when you wake up versus like, oh, God right totally. uh, <laughs> and like the podcast is called big bites for a reason i've told the story on the podcast my parents like think it's absolutely hysterical I'll, like take these huge bites of food when i'm out reporting and it's like been an ongoing joke and i do i mean of anyone in my family i am the foodie and i am the one that like you know oh we got to go here this this place is famous we got to try this and get this but also at the same time i love fitness and i love healthy food and eating healthy eating healthy can be just as fun and fulfilling as like eating really bad, you know, actually more fulfilling and more fun because you don't feel like absolute crap after it, but it's like, I have to work on it. So this is the perfect time um, amid the chaos of the podcast, my real job over at Fox 26, you know, keeping up with social media. It's been a lot, but now it's like, all right, I'm in a rhythm. Like, let's do this. What, what do you say to people who come in and maybe they're talking to you and they're all in, but like, they're already like, yeah, like my boyfriend, my husband, or my friends, like they're, they're going to think I'm nuts. Like, I just know that they're not going to be on board with this. What do you say to them? <laughs> I always like to say, Hey, if you're not getting people talking, you're not doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, but really it's about understanding, like we might not have the most best support at home, but at the end of the day, who's waking up in your shoes? Mm -hmm. Is it them or is it you? Right. And it's going to be challenging. There's going to be an extra layer of discomfort with that. But at the end of the day, I want you to think about who is waking up in your shoes and how do you want to feel? You know, yeah. and, and you can find people along the way. You know, there's definitely, you know, you can you can find walking partners. You know, your partner doesn't like to go yeah. walk. Well, find a friend, call a friend. Yes. I like to say walk in talks are the best, right? The best. The best. the best. And so yeah. if I like to look at the situation as if it's not perfect, how can we make it at least supportive enough to where 
you can get that rhythm, you can find consistency so you can create that contrast. So you can understand what it's like when you are consistent with your walks versus what it's not like, what it's like when you're not, you know? Well, and that's one thing that's fallen off for me. I've been a little busy. I'm really good about hitting my workout classes, but it's the walks. And that's like the secret recipe. I I remember the last time we did this, you were like, make sure you're getting your walks in, even on top of your workout classes. It's just an extra calorie burn and make it clears your mind. It's just, oh, it's so good. And so that's been lacking. It's true. Like that when I'm having some of my stressful days, I look down and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm only at like 4,000 steps, you know? Um, and again, every day is not going to be perfect. Every day. Is it going to be like, we got 20,000 steps. I'm not saying unrealistic. I'm saying, Hey, have we at least brought it to our attention that we're only getting three, four, 5,000 steps Mm -hmm. and how that's actually affecting what's going on here and in our metabolism. So I like to say like that baseline, we want to get at least 8,000 steps to make sure the food coming in turns into energy. This is on top of your workouts. This is like, I mean, maybe this can include your workout as well, but that 8,000 steps really helps you like reduce some static in your metabolism. Totally. And Kat's really good at like knowing where a person is when she's like making your plan, like your meal plan and your workout plan. When, when I moved to Houston, it was like a real struggle for me to even get through my workout classes because like I was so, for me, like honestly, just at a low point and like felt really out of shape and it was hard for me. Now, now we're a year and a half later, I am like running at top speeds in my HIIT workout classes. I'm grabbing weights that I could barely pick up a year and a half ago. Like I'm, so even though like I could sit here and I could be like, oh man, I need to do this challenge because I feel like I gained a couple pounds. Like if you look at it, like in the span of a year and a half, like I have actually made so much progress and like feel so much better. And now it's just like, okay, like let's reset and make sure that I continue feeling that way. You know what I mean? So it's been cool to like see progress, even just like in the gym, lifting heavier, running faster. I mean, I could barely run at a speed eight in my various classes a year and a half ago. Today I ran, I pushed 12. I ran, I did a sprint at 12. Yeah. Wow. So like when you think about the long haul, you you know, just, I would, I personally would tell people like, think about like how far like you've come or how far you could come because like, that's a win for me. Like that I sprinted at a 12. Like that's crazy. I couldn't do that a year and a half ago. And that's the beauty of a challenge, right? It really, yeah. it it's forcing you to get a little uncomfortable and it can be different for everybody. Like you yeah. said, like yeah. we, we modify it to where you're at. Mm-hmm. So if you're only getting 2000 steps, I'm not going to say like, Caroline, I need you to get 12, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, we're building. <laughs> yeah. We're building. Yeah. yeah, totally. Right. So once you ask people, you know, why they're doing it, what's, what's the next step? Yeah. So now that I understand why what would you like to achieve? So if I could wave a magic wand and we're three weeks forward, what do you want to have achieved? I, I, well, first of all, I would like to lose body fat and gain muscle. Mm -hmm. And with that, see the number on the scale come down, even though like, it's not about the number on the scale. It's really like about your body composition. But for me, I, I know where I like to be. And so I'd like to get, you know, achieve that goal and really, you know, see my body fat go down and my muscle mass go up, um, Mm -hmm. would be like the best, the best thing that I could achieve in the next three weeks for sure. So knowing that today you ran at a 12 sprint, think Mm -hmm. about a performance goal. What would you like to achieve on the performance side? I don't know if I could run a 13. Um, (laughs) that's actually great. I was like, ah, I'm so focused running at a 12, but I can keep trying to hit the 12. And then once I feel comfortable, if I want to hit a 13, I can hit a 13 um, during sprints and those classes Um, and just like picking up. So I've been, as long as the class isn't full and like the weights are available, which like they normally are, I'll pick up like 15 or like 20 pounds and 25s or, you know, 15s and 20s. And then I'll try heavier. So even if I only do like half of them heavier, then I could like drop back, but like 15s are heavy. That's really, that's not easy. So 20s are really heavy. 25 is like, sometimes when we're doing like, what is this? Like this type of workout, that's when, yes, that's when I have to drop down to lower weight. But like, if we're doing like rows or something, then I can have like the heavier weight. So just kind of 
Yeah. So that's a smaller muscle compared to your back, which is a bigger. Yes. Yeah. In terms of, yeah. In terms of like your legs, your back, Mm -hmm. I want you to think of those heavier ones because those are the bigger muscles. And I like to say like, that's where we'll get more calorie burn, but also we need to put more tension on those because we utilize our legs all the time, right? Yeah. We, we pull things all the time. We pick up things. So it's, it's putting those a little bit more under tension, like more weight would be perfect. So I wrote down, we're going to focus on continuing that 12 uh, level sprint, maybe working up to a 13 at some point. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And sticking to being aware of, hey, what muscle group are we working on? Let me pick up a heavier weight. If I need to drop down, I can, Mm -hmm. right? Totally. So Uh, with those 20s and 20 Um, minutes. Yeah. No, I, I love my workout. And that's something, you know, too, that I love my workout classes is just getting the nutrition, you know, right on track. So it's 70% of that. You know, I had yeah. a question the other day and I like to say it is 70%, but I had a client ask me the other day, like, if you had to choose what is more important, nutrition or working out? And I was like, hmm, honestly, it's, it's a this and that. Like, if you are not eating well, you can work out. Mm -hmm. but you're not going to feel as good, right? Whereas if you're eating well, you're actually going to feel good and you're going to work out harder. Yeah. Right. Totally. And I love that. That's really where I'm like, it's a this and that it can't be this or that. It's really like, I like to think of nutrition as your foundation. Like this is, this is how you control how you want to feel, how you want to show up in life, how you want to perform in your career, your personal life, how you want to be a mom, how you want to be a dad, how you want to be all these things, right? Yeah. yeah. And so that's and gets, where, yeah. <laughs> it gets to that point too where you're not right. You're not mentally right if you don't go work out. At least for me, I just feel so much better when I work out. And I also feel so much better when I eat healthy in the right portions. But so for, but for some reason that can get hard for me. So Right, um, right. So knowing that your goals, knowing your why, right? We know exactly mm-hmm. what we want to do. We also know what we want to achieve. So losing that body fat, gaining muscle, we have the performance goals as well. Next, what we move into is building out your plan, right? Yeah. Now that I understand where you're at and what you want to do, let's build out your plan. Mm-hmm. Starting with water. Okay. Oh, yay. I just I know. It. Cheers. There we go. Cheers. Cheers. Yes. <laughs> Two of these a day. Mm. I like it. You already know. That's right. Good. Well, so that's why I love a hard workout because sometimes after a really hard workout, I've almost already drank one of these and it's like 10 o'clock in the morning. Yes. So, and then like by the time I go to work, I'm talking a lot on the news. I, easy, I'm always done with this at night. So like that's yeah. super doable. So. Yeah. And my, my thing here is like, I want to make it doable. Caroline, you're easy. You're doable. Like it, it makes sense, right? <laughs> but let's say for somebody, I get a lot of the times like I don't like water, you know, or it's hard for me to remember to drink because I'm never thirsty. Yeah, you know? my mom doesn't like water. Yeah. Linda does not like water. She'll, like, and and she'll say that. She's a special, special human, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I will say that kind of goes in alignment with, like, our spoiled taste buds. Like, we've obviously not given our, our, our body enough consistency with having that. Not to say that we can't have other things, but I'm just saying from the, from the taste bud standpoint, it's – it's usually that they don't like the taste. So what else are we putting in that's sweeter, you know, that yeah. might be throwing it off or maybe it's a tea and they just like the, the, the part of that. But all that being said is I, I really encourage to hydrate before you caffeinate because yeah. a lot of times we wake up and we'll go straight to that caffeine. And again, not wrong. It's just understanding that we've gone, I don't know, ideally seven to eight hours without drinking anything, you know, and we're waking up in a dehydrated state, and then we're we're starting off with a dehydrated drink, you know, to make us more dehydrated. And so that's where that second cup of coffee comes in because we're just we get tired again real quick when really your body's just thirsty, you know. So yeah. I like to say at least twelve ounces, at least twelve. If you're crazy like me, I am crazy cat. You keep on calling me crazy cat. That's <laughs> who I am. Twenty to thirty. Like what I do is I wake up, I have this full. This is a 30 ounce Yeti and I just, until it's gone. I don't, yeah. it's a 30 ounce. Um, again, I worked up to that. I'm not saying like, I need you to do that. You might actually feel a little like, ugh, if you've been <laughs> drink that much water at once. <laughs> um, but really understanding that before, uh, 
hydrate before you caffeinate. And then I mm -hmm. like to say after seven sip, because a lot of the times what we do is we get to bed and we're like, or it's close to bedtime. And we're like, oh my God, I have that 20 ounces still left to hit my goal. And I love that. Like you're aware of your goal. You want to hit your yeah. goal, but I'm going to tell you, I would love for you to actually pass on the goal for that day, because I want you to make sure that you're getting good sleep, right? So I'd rather you pause, go to bed a little bit more dehydrated, I guess, in that sense, mm -hmm. and wake up and drink it, you know? That way yeah. you're getting good quality sleep and are, we're balancing out those hormones throughout the night so you're not actually waking up throughout the night and disrupting mm -hmm. your sleep and feeling more hungry for sugary, salty things because we didn't get good sleep because we were just trying to hit our water goal. Yeah. You know, it doesn't yeah. make sense. Um, Definitely. As long as you make the effort, you know, I may not finish the full thing, but it's like, at least like I drank most of it and I tried and I mean, typically yeah. I, I do finish it, which is not, especially when I work out. So yeah, no, I love that. What I like water though. Like again, like I'm on air sometimes for multiple hours a night. So it's like, it also helps my voice. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and for your goal, you want at least half of your body weight in ounces. Okay. And then on days that you're working out, about 20 ounces more. We live in okay. Houston, though. So, oh you know, gosh. if you're the type of person that's, like, super sweaty all the time, then I would say, honestly, or if you look like you jumped out of a pool when you yeah. get done working out, like, we actually, we need to taper that up a little bit more, you know? Yes, definitely. <laughs> Are electrolytes okay to oh, drink? Oh, yeah. I love electrolytes. I'm a big fan of the Element, Element T. Um, and I love to run hills on Fridays. I know that I've, yeah, I've crazy cat, <laughs> I know, crazy cat. even in the summertime, 1 PM on a Friday, it's blistering hot. Um, but it's like that resilience, like people do cold plunges. I just do yeah. a lot of heat therapy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, I like to, um, do hot yoga and hot Pilates in a room that's a hundred degrees. Like I, I enjoy yeah. that. I don't know why, but it makes me drink a lot of water. So. Exactly. Right. Um, but electrolytes can be really helpful because sometimes depending on the water that we're drinking, it can actually be, um, it can actually be missing some minerals that we need. And so those electrolytes will actually help bring that back in and you'll feel more hydrated. Let's say for example, Caroline, you drank a gallon of water one day and you were just like, it's, you're like, I'm still so thirsty. How did I drink a gallon? And I'm still so thirsty. Typically, that means that we need some of those electrolytes. Or if yeah. you just sweat a whole lot, then it's just a safe thing to say, hey, put in some electrolytes. I like to think about, like, honestly, if I'm having a foggy brain or if I am just, like, just not myself, it's like, okay, it's probably time for some electrolytes. Yeah, I totally agree. It's electrolytes were kind of newer for me in the last several months. I think, you know, you were the one that was like, yeah, you should, you should get some and drink them because you do a lot of like hot workouts and different things. And they definitely do help. I actually maybe should have drank some last week. I was like getting headaches last week. I was like, Oh, yes. I, don't know. I think maybe I needed electrolytes. That's a, that's a sign as well. Thank you for yeah, bringing that up. It could sure. also be too much coffee, which is the next thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So oh, yeah. <laughs> and I will say, like, again, I know this part can kind of deter people from joining this. And so we can always modify it, right? But the point of actually cutting out coffee for at least a week is to help give your adrenals a break. So giving those things that actually keep you going, um, that monitor your stress levels, giving them a break. And if you need that caffeine, swapping it out for green tea. There's yeah. a lot of good antioxidants. There's a lot of good properties in green tea. And it is a nice cleaner switch from coffee, you know? Yeah. It has L-theanine in it, which is actually a protein that goes into your brain and makes you feel calm, but also alert. I love that. Um, I did switch the last time to green tea. The first time I thought I could not give up coffee. I was like, uh, no. Now, just in my normal life, I pretty much don't drink coffee every day at all. Like, cause I'll get up and go to a workout class and then, you know, if I need it, I need it. If I don't, I don't, but definitely I like the approach of not fueling your body with the caffeine. As soon as you wake up is I feel like, especially for women, right. That's probably like good. To um, not exactly. Yeah. For women specifically caffeine, especially a lot of it can really play into our hormones and so it really is, you know, biggest thing, if we are going to be having caffeine, really try to make sure that we're having it no later but than noon, 
you know, maybe 2 p.m. at the latest because it takes a while for caffeine to get out of your system. So even if you're laying in bed at 10, but you had a cup of coffee or like something caffeinated at two, you might still have some, a good amount of caffeine in your system depending yeah. on how strong it was. So that can really impact that sleep. And you're like, why can't I fall asleep? And that's, yeah, that's a big that's piece why. of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of difficult for me because we've talked about my schedule. Uh, I do the 10 o'clock news. Yeah. So I'm at work until 10 30, 10 45 at night, whatever. And so I have to be careful of that because you know, when you're sitting at work, everybody gets starts to feel tired. It's just like a natural thing. Right. Um, but it's like, okay, no, I can just push through this with water or whatever, because I try to go right home and go to bed. And yeah. so I can't be having like this late night caffeine yeah. in me keeping me up. That would just be, yeah. And, and I've done it before. And then, then you can't sleep, but it's like, you're tired at the same time and it's miserable. So yeah, I, that definitely really helped the last time that I made that change and still is, that's something I've like really stuck to. So. And I remember for that, you know, we also know that there's a lot of lights there, you know, a lot <sighs> of bright lights. Yeah which is really disruptive for your sleep. So I remember our protocol was like on your way home, we turn on the spa music and we're just yes. like getting into that Zen mode and then yeah. get into bed. And trying not to like look at your screen, which I'm still bad at. Um, we're not turning on the TV just so I can like just go to bed. There's so many people who work night side who stay up until like three in the morning. I try, I've always on every schedule I've been on the news, like I want to keep my life as normal as possible. So that's why I like, I try to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner in within that normal yeah. like range of, of hours. Sometimes like if work's really busy, I might end up like eating dinner closer to eight, but I really try to keep it like earlier than that. And then not eating anything after my shift because I want to be like a normal person. I don't want to like sleep all day, then get up and go to work at two. Like, yeah, I just yeah. try to be normal, you know? <laughs> I know. And that's tough in that world. It's yeah. tough. And so it's, it's you having the discipline and you put those boundaries yeah. there, you know, and with that, you have to put in that little extra action of like, okay, I could do this, but I know when I totally. wake up, I'm not going to want to go to do my workout. I'm not going to want to yeah. go do these things. So you got to this place, Caroline, that you were able to value it, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's, it's not something that you just woke up one day and you're like, okay, this is who I am. It's like you went through a journey of doing the opposite and realizing, okay, that's not really what I want, yeah. you know? Yeah, totally. A hundred percent. So that, so once you start putting the plan in place, like what, what are you asking or what do you like, what do you have to find out about me to be like, okay, this is, this is going to work for her. Yeah. You know, again, I think it's always going to work. I know, I know without a doubt, something is going to change, whether that is your actually multiple things will change your body composition, your mindset, your perspective on health and fitness. Like those are the three things that when I sit with somebody and I learn about you, I want to make sure that you have the right plan in place to start seeing and opening the door for all of those. That's why you said like a year and a half ago, this is where I was at, but now I'm mm -hmm. here. It wasn't yeah. just because like, it wasn't just this. It was the fact that you started to see a different perspective, you yeah, know? Totally. And, and like it, old me wouldn't have stepped on that scale yesterday because I came off of like, Easter weekend, we went to golf tournaments, we're drinking, we're brunching, whatever. I would have been like, no, but I'm like, you know what? It's not that big of a deal. Like just get on the scale, yeah. start, start the reset. And yeah. honestly, when I weigh myself again and see the results, I'll probably be super pumped because you know, it'll be oh, like, yeah. I know it's going to work. And so it's like kind of getting to that point too, which is nice instead of just like beating yourself up for like having some fun, like, okay. So the scale was up a couple pounds, like big deal. Yeah. Like it'll, We're human. it's going to change. Yeah. We're human. Totally. We're going to have times that we enjoy more things out. And then we're going to have these times that we're like, Hey, let's get to work. It's just, that's what it is. We have to learn how to number one, what are the tools and resources that we have available with the time mm -hmm. and energy that we have available. Right. Definitely. And that's why we fit into this, this, this world, this industry is that a lot of people don't have the time to cook and they don't have the, if they do have the time to cook, they don't have the time and energy to focus on getting more steps, getting to the gym consistently, prioritizing their, yeah. their sleep, you know, all these pieces that all work synergistically. And so I would, I would love to say another piece of this and why I know that we get you results 
is helping you see that alcohol is actually going to slow down your results, right? Mm -hmm. Or get in the way of it. And again, we were just setting boundaries on that. I don't even want to say that we officially said like you couldn't have any. I think you surprised me by saying I didn't have any because I didn't Mm -hmm. want any. I think we set a boundary. We're like, okay, just like one, right? You're like, I didn't even want to do that. Well, because like the first like time or two, I'm like making all, I'm like, well, I have this and I have that. I have this event, you know, all these things. And sometimes like you might, but you shouldn't let like, okay, let's say that you're, you're in the middle of this challenge, but like, you know, your someone's like your sister is getting married, right? You don't have to like blow out that whole week. Like just maybe take the rehearsal dinner and the day of the wedding and enjoy yourself and then just get like right back on it. You know what I mean? I mean, it's best to like not break and that's what I'm doing this time, but you know, life is life. So I wouldn't let like one event derail you from like really trying, you know, to change something. Like it's just one day or like one night and one, one day, if it's like a wedding event or something and then just like get right back on it. And that used to be like, Oh, well this week's a wash. Like I have this (laughs) event and Oh, well I'll start next week because I have that, you know, Oh, I'm going to be drinking that day. So might as well not start like getting out of that cycle. Help me so much too. Like, no, just think of these as meals, not like full days. That helped me so much. Think of it like 21 meals. Like you have 20 men, 21 meals a week. Like if you have breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day for seven days, it's 21 meals, right? And so if we think about having two of those off plan versus two days, which would be six, you know, this is how we see the difference. This is actually, yes, we can have those treat meals. We can work them in. Ideally on the challenge, like we're doing no more than one per week. Um, a lot of my clients, obviously, like they're like, no, I want to get the best. And so yeah. we'll go three weeks without it. And and again, it's not about being restricted. Mm-hmm. It's about understanding that each meal does count. And right now you're here to to challenge yourself. You're here to get uncomfortable so you can learn yourself a little bit more. You know? Yeah, I was so uncomfortable. But thinking of it in meals, Kat, instead of days, I used to think days. It's mm-hmm. just a meal. It's one it's meal. A- it's just a yeah. meal. Like, and that helped me so much, like making better choices. So now like that you have that info. So what, like, what do I do now? Like, you're like, I'm just going to, I'm basically going to go to my fit foods, but you can also order it. Right. Like, yeah, we have local delivery and we just started same day pickup. So we're about to have same day delivery coming out soon, but we, we have local delivery. Um, you can come into either of our stores. We have a location at the Heights or this one is off, is off Buffalo Speedway right next to you. And, um, we really, we can help you just shop the coolers, right? We can go through the in-body process and get Mm -hmm. you dialed in, or we can just understand where you're at a little bit and what you want to achieve. And we can be like, Hey, we recommend this start here. And when you're ready, let's get on the in-body, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's that easy. And if you go into my fit foods, um, anybody can do the and body machine Correct. that's open yeah. to anyone, anybody like would help you. And then they'll help you understand the breakfast, lunch, dinner options and the different yeah. sizes. And like, it's so easy. There's so many choices and it's like, they put cheese in their meals, which yeah. is amazing. Like it's not, you're not eating like a pe- like piece of chicken and like vegetables. Like these are, there's like so many good options that feel so indulgent. Like the morning scramble feels mm-hmm. like, so indulgent and good. It has like meat and veggies and eggs and I think some cheese in it, but it's all mm-hmm. portioned out and like you're, it's it's so good. I'm gonna have one after this, I think. Good, good. Um, yeah. It's it's like they just you just make it so easy. So like you don't have to be intimidated to walk in there. You can you don't even have to do the total body scan. You can just mm-hmm. be like, you know, I'm just looking for some healthy meals. And yep. that's where I started. I was just like, I need some healthy meals. And now because it is so close to where I work, um, sometimes like if I'm just like not feeling it and I don't have, I didn't bring a meal with me. It's like, I can run in there and I grab it just because it's so convenient and so easy. Yeah. It's actually like easier for me than like going to a fast food place or something unhealthy, you know, it's yeah. just like super easy. You don't have to be on a plan. You can just come in, you can grab a meal, you can grab a whole week's worth, right? Um, we have over 40 options to choose from. We vacuum seal um, all of our meals so that they have a longer shelf life so you can actually pick up a week at a time. And then I love to say, since I have celiac, um, I would say about 98% of our meals are gluten-free. 
with the exception of just a few. And so that really, I mean, has opened up the door for me totally. So I, I love that I can come to work and actually eat the food. That's huge and so helpful. That sa- I love the salmon. The salmon's so oh, good. Sure. That's definitely gluten-free for sure. I mean, so yeah. much of it is. Um, so I guess like I want to go over just some questions I feel like people would have like who want to do a reset yeah. that maybe were like in the state that I was in. So one of the things I would ask you would be like, well, what do I do about my greens powder, my Kiala greens or my bloom greens that I like to drink in the morning? Ah, I love that question. What a, honestly. So I would just look at it with you and make sure that number one, it doesn't have a ton of crazy ingredients or like just sweeten heavily with some crazy stuff, right? Like we can add that in. Greens are really good to help with the appetite and help break down foods. So it has the enzymes to help you digest things better. So I'm all about it. I really like my greens in the morning. I really do. They are, <laughs> they are good, but I don't even know why I drink them. It's just like, you know, you see them on social media and so you want to get in on the craze. So yeah, yeah. I guess we probably have to look at that. Um, can I have a, with my meal, can I pair it with a banana or an apple or a strawberry? What are your thoughts on that? Interesting. A strawberry. Um, or like absolutely. a couple of strawberries. No, I know, I know, Let's I know. say like a, a cup of strawberries. Yeah. So in terms of just overall calories, right? Whenever we break you down and we understand like, okay, what is your calorie range? So you are a human. I'm not going to say like, you need exactly this number. It's like, we're having a range and we're going to figure out your protein, right? So the biggest thing is fitting that protein into that range. So whatever we have left over based on that, we can throw in, we can incorporate some of those fruits, right? But it has to be intelligent. And we have to understand that one banana is usually two servings, you know? And so really understanding that, hey, if we are going to have a banana, Unless it's like the really, like, you know, decently small. The really small ones, yeah. But those big ones, those are at least two, I know. two servings, I know. you know? And so it's just understanding that, like, berries are always going to be one of the higher antioxidants and they're going to have less sugar. So I'm always about, like, hey, let's get more bang for our buck there. So yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, I see um, protein shakes are on my meal plan because mm-hmm. I love the protein powder. It's so good. But um, I can add um, a freaking huge scoop of peanut butter in there and bana- frozen bananas and frozen fruit and uh, then some flax seed. Oh, why don't we throw some chia seeds in there? Like, that's fine, right? That is a <laughs> awesome thing if you are a football player and I'm trying to feed you. <laughs> Thank you. I know. It adds up. It adds up. Oh, yeah. My husband makes one of those and it literally, he makes it like a two size. It's 800 per serving. You know, so oh my God. they add up quickly. And again, not to demonize any food, right? It's again, understanding, Caroline, you want to change your body composition. You want to lose mm-hmm. body fat. You want to gain muscle. And we can do this in a way, but we have to, we have to watch the calories. We have to see where they're coming from because that, what you just described is heavy in energy sources. It's heavy in fats and it's heavy in carbs. If we had a look at the breakdown of that, it would have more calories coming from carbs and fats than it would from protein. And so the point of your protein shake is to make sure we're giving your body what it needs to hit your goal and staying within that calorie range. Yeah, um, I see a lot of people loading up those protein shakes. And I mean, I think that if you're trying to really um, do what I did, which was a, a reset and what I am gonna do, it's probably best, right, to just do the protein shake powder with ice and then do you suggest water or almond milk yeah so i love i'm i'm a coconut fan gal all the way like coconut milk but oh, the yeah. uns, unsweetened versions right so if you are going to do an alternative milk i would recommend the almond milk or the coconut milk but um let's say that we really do have to watch because movement is low like we actually just don't have the, the capability of moving our body a lot more then I would say like, let's go with the water because we do Mm -hmm. have to just monitor that intake a little bit more. But if we are moving our bodies consistently, we can either just do, you know, the eight ounces of the unsweetened almond milk or coconut milk, or maybe even just do a half and a half, like four ounces of it with with plus four ounces of water. Um, On that note, before we move off protein uh, shakes and snacks, So my biggest thing, like people are like, well, what if I don't like protein shakes and I can do a protein bar instead? Okay. I 
I love, I love protein bars. They are glorified candy bars. They taste so yes. good. If you remember protein bars, um, at least 10 to 20 years ago, like they tasted like chalk, <laughs> you know? You mean to tell me the Quest bars that I like to eat are glorified candy bars? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. And again, not wrong or right. They're just going to add to more cravings. They're not actually going to give yeah. your body the nutrients that it's saying like, hey, I need. Yes, it's going to give you some some protein, but it's also a very synthesized form of it. And so, you know, if, if you don't like protein shakes, I mean, I always say, tell my, my clients is like, we can go to a non-fat Greek yogurt. You know, we're looking, I like to say like a snack protein shake or like a protein snack should be at least 20 grams of protein. If it's yeah. not 20 grams of protein, then we're just, we're having some calories. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I'm so good at just having calories. I will tell you that. But now I'm more aware of, you know, what I'm putting into my body. Um, okay. So somebody wants to do the challenge um, and we kind of went over how, you know, if you have like a big event, like your freaking sister's getting married, whatever it may, like use that as the meal that you're going to have at the reception and like get back on it the next day. That was huge for me. Um, but sometimes um, people will find themselves because life is unpredictable, like in a situation where maybe their flight gets delayed at the airport and they didn't know they were going to be stuck in the airport for like six hours or, you know, three hours and they're getting really hungry and they don't know what to eat or I don't know, may, my job as a news reporter sometimes, what if I'm out on breaking news and I have no food with me and we're out there for the night and it's like, you don't know, whatever the situation may be. 100%. Where do people, where should people turn in those moments where you're looking at fast food as your only option or like you're in the airport and it's just all that junk? What do you do in those moments and how do you make a selection that won't like throw your whole plan off and won't make you feel like, like you failed? I love this. Okay. So airports. Oh my gosh. That is like the crazy place for me because having celiac, like I get anxiety mm, all around yeah. that because there's no options. Yeah. But if there were options that I could have and that I look at is understanding that again, protein is at the center of feeling good. If we go and have, you know, some fried food, that's obviously going to feel bad, right? And so I would say at an airport, truly the best thing that you can do is find one of those salads and maybe even get two of them so you can have two of the servings of the protein. You yeah, know? the chicken, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and then at some airports, obviously they have nicer things, but if it's one of those things that you just, there's not a lot of options, I would also grab a protein shake that they they have pre-made in those. Like every every place has pre-made protein shakes now. Yeah. Um, and just having some water and understanding like, hey, this is not ideal. But at the same time, I know if I have this other thing, I'm going to be like poop, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I would say there a lot of airports have the fast food chains that might offer like a grilled chicken, um, mm -hmm. like nugget, like Chick-fil-A does or sandwich where like, would, would that be totally yeah. terrible to take the bread off maybe and eat the chicken or eat the grilled nuggets? I don't personally like love those, but like if I'm in a desperate situation, is that an option? Uh, yes, absolutely. I would get double, double protein mm -hmm. always. And then I wouldn't get the, the breaded. I would just get the grilled. Yeah, yeah the know? grilled. Yeah. And then if you and, need a dressing, um, you know, ask for the lemon, you know, mm -hmm. or you can be crazy. You can be crazy cat and just put mustard on it. Just like plain yeah, mustard. Mustard's Not the honey mustard. So yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then sometimes if you Google, um, like the sauces at the restaurants, there might be one sauce that's like five calories for the thing. And you might yeah. see others that are like 160 calories. So right. Like just being yeah. like mindful of the serving is like super, yeah. super small too. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, Oh my gosh, that whole thing is over a hundred calories. Um, yeah. and then, for people who've never like done anything, watched what they ate or like put an emphasis on health and working out, um, I, I guess, what would you say to them if they want to start? Yeah, honestly, I would say, you know, if, if they had walked into my food foods mm -hmm. and they were like, I'm at ground zero, I don't know what I need to do, but I obviously feel like there's something in me recently that's like, let's make a change right? It's about meeting the person where they're at and asking exactly what we've done. You know, like how, how do you feel and how do you want to feel, right? 
we don't have to do a 180 today, but let's start thinking about from the base, the basic needs of your body, like how much protein are we getting? Because on average, a lot of people um, get anywhere from, I would say, 40 to 90 grams. Like if you're not tracking, like you're probably getting somewhere between 40 and 90 grams of protein a day. And that's not, that's not wrong. It's just, that's why you're also having intense cravings for things. That's why you never seem to feel full. And when you are full, you're just so full because you ate too much. Um, (laughs) But all that said is understanding that we are on a journey until we take our last breath, you know, and my, my passion is helping people understand what their balance is of health and life. And it doesn't have to be all my fit foods. It doesn't have to be intense working out. It literally is, how can I get 1% better each day? And what does that look like to you? Not to me, you know? What does that look like to you? And let me help support you in that. Um, it's really, yeah, I think that this tool, is, I, I love my, I cannot, I eat this thing at least two to three meals a day. Mile high barbecue chicken is my absolute favorite. I will have it for breakfast and lunch, like, practically every day then buy some breakfast for dinner um i love potatoes i'm a big potato fan Mm -hmm. but all that being said is like this food is tasty um yes it's not going to taste like chick-fil-a but that's the point like we want you to number one know that it is restaurant quality with a home cooked taste you know it's it doesn't get much better in terms of meal prep and it's just you can you have 40 other options to choose from like If you don't like the salmon, if you don't like the mile high chicken, well, guess what? There's 38 other ones to choose from. (laughs) It's so cool. And when I got the tour of all the, like the spices are all organic and the rice is a certain kind of rice that doesn't elevate your blood sugar. And like just walking through there, the, how the salmon is sourced and everything was so cool. And I was like, okay, well now I see it. I think Mario really wanted me to see it. And then work with you and believe it and it like helps so much and your cat is the perfect example of someone you want to learn from you are so fit and just so like you've got it all going on so when i met her i was like oh yeah she she knows what she's doing you're a walking billboard for all the information that and all the help that you're giving people like i love that so um that that helped a lot too because i was like wow well I like, I like the way she, she has her muscles going on and she's eating and fulfilled and I can do that too. So I'm still working on it, but I'm super excited to do another 21 day challenge with you. I'm super excited to share this information with people because I feel like, yeah, it is out there, but you know, a lot of times you don't know the person who's doing it. I'm going to take, you know, before and after, um, for me, I'm, I'm super lucky because my main goal when I kind of started with my fit foods was just to fit in all my dresses that I have to anchor the news in all my outfits. And I do. And that's great. So now it's, it's like, you know, all right, just a reset, getting better than where I am. You know, I kind of fell back. We're going to get back on, um, a, a plan that I feel really good about. And it, it, it's not that difficult. Like if I can do it, I have a podcast called big bites. Like I love food. I love mm-hmm. going out, but it's just recentering myself. And, you know, I want to go into summer of some trips, like feeling really good. And, um, when I'm eating good and when I have a coach that just helps me be better at work and just all around. So I'm super excited about it, Kat. And I can't thank you enough for coming on the podcast. You were so yeah. eager and just so ready. And I'm, I'm so glad. I'm so happy. This is going to be fun. And I look forward to your check-ins yes. so I can send you your videos and really make sure that you're, you're yes. growing each week, staying on track and um, always just being real. You know? That's a that's a perk of the coach. She checks in with me every week. We kind of go through how are you doing? How are you feeling? Do we need to you know change anything? Are you feeling okay? And you know all, all that stuff. And then at the end of the three weeks, we go over like what changed. And I I kind of said maybe we could do like a mini podcast episode, kind of just going over what I went through and what changed over the three weeks and put that out there. I think that I think the audience would like that. Yeah, that'd be fun. Let's okay, do it. perfect. All right. Thanks, Kat. All right. I'll be thanks. in. I'll be in for food soon. Yay. Okay. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Thank you so much for joining me on Big Bites. Make sure to like and subscribe to the podcast so I can keep these inspirational and motivating conversations going. I love having you here. And remember, you deserve a seat at the table.